Hardy's Friday Night Blitz is sponsored by Hardy's, Don Hudson Insurance, Muckadoos, Wicked Diesel, and by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Ah, uh, yes, good evening, everyone. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hoping your day is wonderful and blessed. Congratulations to the K-Spring Knights competition cheer team on winning their fifth state title. And welcome to the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz. We're in playoff mode with the VHSL Regional Quarterfinals. Highlights of 13 games, and we kick off the action with our Game of the Week. Now, the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz Game of the Week. Sponsored by Don Hudson Insurance. Our Hardy Friday Night Blitz Game of the Week is an historic one, as in the long history of the Patrick Henry William Fleming robbery, tonight is the first time they met as playoff opponents. This one is in the Region 5C quarterfinals. Both teams with strong seasons. The Patriots are the top seed in the region, while Fleming had their first winning regular season since 2014. Also, 2014 was the last time the Colonels beat the Patriots. PH beat Fleming in the regular season matchup. So let's go over to Merrill Gaynor Field for all the action. And this game of the week had a lot going on and then some. First off, how about a former guy here, our player of the week? How about Malachi Coleman takes off to the outside? He sees 50, as in 50 yards to the zone. Touchdown, the Colonels go up 7 to nothing to the second quarter. Just see Preston plows his way in for a touchdown, 14 nothing. Fleming. But back come the Patriots, 3.45 to go in the half. Quali Carter, he's going to call his own number, gets it in, touchdown, and it is 14-7, PH trailing by 7. It's now 17-7, big game here. Did you see it? Preston to K-Ron Ferguson with the dive and the extension. He stuck the landing, touchdown, the next point was blocked, so it's 23-17. But then PH coming back, Quali Carter, he goes to the air, hooking up with Marcel Murray, who takes this one to the house. He is gone. The two-point conversion was missed, so it was 23-13 Fleming. But then PH trying to close the gap, but they're going to get some Colonel Ferncliff supersized cup of eight or eight. Darren McCoy does it again. I tell you, he's always on a highlight. He's in the zone there, and the Colonel's in an eight-game winning streak, losing streak to the Patriots with a 23-16 upset victory. Fleming gets Douglas Freeman on the road next week in the regional semis. Ryan Moy has more on the game from Merrill Gaynor Field. Well, for tonight's game of the week, it was a Region 5C quarterfinal matchup between two teams who know each other too well. Patrick Henry taking on William Fleming. The Colonels able to get out early in the game, but Patrick Henry would not stop. They didn't let up, but their comeback capped off by a interception by William Fleming's very own Darren McCoy. That's a game changing moment right there. That was a heck of a play. Very proud of all of our guys. They all came to play today. Special teams, offense, defense. I mean, we, we got the win. That's all that matters. Man, I saw the ball. I went to go get it. I said, oh, yeah, this is my game over. I knew it was game when he threw that ball. I just knew it's over with. Again, it was a unique opportunity playing them in the playoffs. I told our guys after we were here the first time, I said, you could very possibly see this team again and look where we are. Um, I'll say this about these kids. They showed that they wanted another Monday. That's what we fight for is Mondays. So they showed that tonight. They proved it, and I'm just very proud of them. Man, it feels amazing, man. All the talk they do, every, how hard we work, man, it feels amazing. We earned this, and we worked for it. Man, we finna go on a run, man. Stay tuned. This is just the beginning, man. This is just the beginning. We coming. Believe that. We got us another Monday. Whoever's next up, that's who we're going to prep for. Um, and we won't be ready for next Friday until we handle Monday through Thursday first. So for anybody that wants to ask me, no, we ain't going to be ready till Friday. Um, but again, I'm just super proud of our kids, man. I'm, I'm at a loss for words a little bit, but it, it's an exciting time. Well, the Colonels in Patrick Henry's season, and they will continue to move on to the playoffs. At Patrick Henry High School, Ryan Moy, WFXR Sports. Thank you so much, Ryan. On to Region 40, the top seed, the Salem Spartans, climbed up to the top spot last week of the season. Salem hosting Liberty Bealton out of Northern Virginia. They are at Salem Stadium. They have a tradition at Salem. They ring the bell every time they score. But, boy, they have rung the bell a lot over the years. Case in point, Salem already up 35-0. Sophomore fullback Jaden Burden is going to carry a burden, the rock to the zone. It's 42 to nothing. Salem Burden says, I love the end zone so much, I'm going to score again. He takes it in for the score. It was 48-0 Salem at halftime. And the Spartans, they rolled to a 55-7 win. They will host Hanley next week in the semis. Over in Forest, the two-seed Jefferson Forest, hosting a red-hot seventh seed in George Washington. They're on a five-game winning streak. Forest up 10-0 to start the half. 
And then GW uh, with uh, Josiah Bell, he's going to hook up with Damon Williams. He gets the ball stripped away, and Antonio Matos of GW would recover the fumble. And then it was recovered. Samuel Hammer's attack on the extra yard. So they would have to sell for a field goal, 13 to nothing uh, right there in favor of JF. But then Jaden Glenn takes the handoff from the Nehemiah Cavill. He runs it in from 18 yards out. It would be 13 to 6. The lead would be cut, but JF, they would hang on and get the win tonight, 20 to 13 over GW. JF gets the winner of this one between EC Glass and, yeah, former Glass coach Jeff Woody in the house. Anyway, Michael Thomas Jr. doing some running, and he's going to run well. Take off, young fella. You got one. Touchdown. 17 to 6, Glass. And it was a, not a cold night or a cool night, but you got to huddle up. Blankets are not necessarily optional in November. Anyway, Sharando's Brady Hamilton is going to get a touchdown there, made it 23 to 13. And then how about can I get some more Michael Thomas Jr.? Can I get some more Michael Thomas Jr.? Yes, I can. He plows in for the score. Glass, they had to hang on to beat Sharando 38 to 30. So they visit Jefferson Force next week in the regional semis. Coming up in the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz with playoff action. We hit the class three ranks, region C and D highlights. Stick and stay, please. Now, Hardy's Friday Night Blitz, Band of the Week. Friday Night Blitz on WFXR. Time to get it on. And welcome back to the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz in Region 3 seed. Liberty Christian is the top seed and for good reason. At 9-0, they have flexed their muscles with offense and defense in their run for their first VHSL state football title got going tonight as they hosted Slovana County. First quarter action, and this game was rocking and rolling early and often. LCA already had a 14-0 lead. Jeb Moon, he's going to drop back and hook up with Mr. Clemson. Future Tiger, Gideon Davison. GD, are you with me? That's a touchdown to the zone, 21-0 LCA. Later in the period, it's going to be Eli Castandia. He's going to take the rock, gets to the outside. Big man rumbling for the pay window. Touchdown, 28-0 LCA, and they roll to a 56-6 win. Next week, they will host Rustburg in a regional semifinal. Meanwhile, seventh seed Heritage visiting the number two seed in Bridgewater and slashed a quarterback calls his own number for Heritage, gets it in. Heritage takes a seven to six lead, but later on it was now 19 to six and slash goes to the air, hits Amiri Kelso for the 10 yard score. And that was a touch that made 19 to 14, but Heritage, their season comes to an end as Turner Ashby gets the win over that 26 to 14, the final in that matchup. Well, on the Region 3D as the top seed, Magna Vista got an early start yesterday in the regional quarterfinals, winning at home over Stanton River 35 to 13. Now the Warriors will host the winner of this game, Christiansburg hosting Abington. The Blue Demons, they beat the Falcons the last four meetings, including last year's playoff game and in week two of this season. Christiansburg already looking good early. It was 12 to nothing at recess. And then how about this? A field goal by the, Ab the Abington Falcons. They would get it in there, but Christiansburg, they would go on and they would get the win over Abington. It would be a 26 to three win. The Blue Demons, they will visit the Warriors in the regional semifinals next week. There's number two seed in the region, William Byrd hosting Pulaski County. The Cougars, perfect 4-0 all-time against the Terriers. And on the opening kickoff, how about Walter Barrows or Barrows? He's gonna borrow his way to the zone. That's a touchdown with the extra point, seven, nothing William Byrd. And then more Byrd. How about Israel Harrison? He is a baller shot caller. They call him Izzy on the campus. Big man on campus. Izzy gets it in. 14 0 Bird. Bird showed that they would have defense. Bryant Noddington is going to drop back to pass for the Cougars. And then how about John Kiker? Yes, John Kiker with the big play. I went to school with his dad. He's a PH alum. Got it in there. Anyway, how about Israel Harrison? He's going to fake the handoff and he's going to run it up himself. He is going for glory, pay dirt, touchdown, all that good stuff. It was 21 to nothing, William Byrd. But the Pulaski County Cougars showed that they had an option, and his name is Trevor Gallimore. Gets it in for the touchdown, 21 7 Byrd. But too much Byrd tonight. Braden Andrews 
He's going to get it right there off the tip drill from Harrison. 20 to 7 at this point. Bird gets their first ever win over Pulaski, 45 to 21. Meanwhile, Bird would get the winner of this one between Lord Botot and Bassett. These two teams met in the playoffs last year. Botot getting the win in this one. Bassett is going to get on the board first. How about this kick here by Cole Bird, a 33 yarder, made 3 0 there. Meanwhile, Tristan Overbay's mom, she missed this play, but Mrs. Overbay, I think you're going to love this one. You heard the roar from the parking lot, and this is why they were roaring. 50 yards for Tristan sitting on the dock of the Overbay. Touchdown, 7 0 Cavaliers. And then the Bengals. How about David Cook's going to be picked off by Keyshawn Anderson? Big man, look at 78. Yeah, big man loves to intercept balls too, not the lean ones. The big ones can do it. And then how about Overbay, a five yard score, 14 3 LB. Cavaliers, they go on to beat the Bengals 42 to 10. Next week, LB gets that rematch with Bird over in Vinton. Coming up on Hardy's Friday Night Blitz, as we're first with your scores and highlights, we have the last batch of scores and highlights from regions 2C, 1B, and 1C, plus our latest player of the week with Ryan Moy. Stick and stay, please. And now, Hardy's Friday Night Blitz, Hardy's Fan Cam, sponsored by Hardy's. Friday Night Blitz on WFXR. Time to get it on. And we're back with more Hardy's Friday Night Blitz. Time for a look at Region 2C quarterfinals. The top seed, the Rapper Bobcats, they've been strong throughout the year. Their road to Salem begins with a playoff matchup with Three Rivers District foe in James River. Now, Rapper beat James River earlier in the year, 55 to nothing, and they showed they came out with a purpose. How about Landon Clark hooking up with the record setting receiver, Max Knipe? He's not going to be denied. Hard running, Mr. Knipe gets it in for the touchdown from 20 yards out. The Bobcats would score there. And then more Landon Clark, but this time he is going to show that sharing is caring. He's going to hand it off to a young man that loves to get his grub on. J.D. Grubb running to the outside, young fella. You got one for the touchdown, 14-0. Bobcats, Rapid rolls to a 63-0 shutout over James River. So, they would get the winner of this one. Appomattox hosting Chatham. The Raiders have beaten their dog with district rivals 17 straight times. The Raiders, however, would fumble the ball right there, and it would be covered by Chatham. The next play here, Chatham fumbles it away right here. Yeah, Chatham fumbles the ball right there. So it would go back to Appomattox, and it was more turnovers in a bakery on this cool night in Appomattox. But Daniel Bradley is going to go make a move. Crazy eights with the spin. Touchdown 7 0 in favor of the Raiders and some former NFL and LU stars in the house. Meanwhile, more Appomattox. How about this? Daniel Bradley is going to block the kick and take it in for his own touchdown. The Raiders roll to a 49 6 win over the Cavaliers. So Appomattox, they will visit Radford in the regional semifinals. The number two seed, Gretna, their only losses this year came to JF Magna Vista, hosting Floyd County, and this one will be a tight one throughout. Gretna's Zamarion Younger, he's going to run hard here. He's going to fight off some defenders, and he'll find the pay window. That's what you call a touchdown, 6 nothing Gretna. And then Gretna shows they have some air attack. Melvin Wooden, the fourth, he's going to hook up with Amari. Gun jumps in. That's a leaping catch for the touchdown. Nicely done. Gretna led 12 0 at halftime. This game will go to overtime, and Gretna would get the win over Floyd 28 27. So the Hawks, they will host Glimmer in the regional semifinals. And speaking of Glimmer, we kind of gave it away. They hosted Patrick County a rematch in the three rivers. And yes, it was a good night to be under the blankets. A little chill in the air, but Glenver had some hot play on the turf. Cooper Mullins going to run inside, got that touchdown on the spin. And of course, that's a touchdown. And you know the cheerleaders had to fire up the crowd tonight. In fact, the Glenver cheerleaders finished second in a class two cheerleading competition, by the way. Meanwhile, how about this play? Brody Doyot finding Reed Hutchison. He's going to leave everybody flat footed, gets it in there and does the nutcracker. Is that the nutcracker? Yes, that's the nutcracker. Yeah, I love it. We're nicely done. Do it again. OK, we got it. Anyway, Glenver would go on and roll over Patrick County 56 and none. So the Highlanders, they get 
Gretna again they'll visit them next week in the playoffs. Let's go to the scores region 1 B. You see that William Campbell got the win over Franklin last night 44 nothing. The generals will visit Sussex Central in the regional semifinals out to visit. They rolled to a 64 to 16 win over Surrey County so they get Brunswick. They visit that place next week. Region 1 C quarters top seeded Grayson County last night held on to defeat Giles 14 to 6. Grayson County will host Galax in the regional semis. They beat Bath County 42 to 7. And then the other side of their bracket and upset Fort Chiswell knocked off Narrows to seventh seed, doing it to the two. 48 to 19. The Pioneers will visit the number three seed in George Wythe as they beat six seed at Perry McClure 45 to 20. Meanwhile, North Cross begins the defense of their title in the VIS AA Division 2. They host Nansman Suffolk tomorrow afternoon at 2. Again, that's a VIS AA Division 2 semifinal. Now, Hardy's Friday Night Blitz Player of the Week, sponsored by Wicked Diesel. Well, this week's athletes have continued to dominate all season long on the field. Not only are they sporting some new threads, but they also came away with another win in their 61 to 18 victory over Floyd County last Friday. And guess what? They're your players of the week. Priscilla Turner, Dez Jordan, wide receiver, quarterback, Allegheny, Allegheny High School. School. After the first couple games, I knew that this squad was just going to go far, and I think we have a good shot going really far in this playoff. We just knew if we were going to have a successful season, we were also going to have to play together and work as a team from not playing with people that we haven't played with and come together and win. We wouldn't be doing anything with our own line. They, the one thing I noticed about them, they're really smart. They take what they're doing very seriously. What's it been like having person on this team? You know, it's been great. You know, he's a, a great uh, teammate to the team. I mean, he contributes a lot to the team. I learned that when he leaves that I got to take over how he does and try to lead like he did. What is it like having Des as your quarterback? He, he might be a sophomore, but he is not. His, his mentality is not a sophomore. He has a more mature mentality than other people in his grade. He knew that he was going to be good for us for the next couple years and it brought me more peace knowing that he really brought the table. When I put the jersey on, that we're going to go out there and destroy. It's the first time ever wearing something like this and showing that every game these little kids are saying number 14, number 14 and it just it warms my heart. Most people didn't expect us to, you know, do as good as we've been because, you know, we're playing with different people, different coach, different everything, different school, and we've just been proving wrong and doing better. And what does Coach Fields mean to you? He's a great coach, and I don't think we would be where we are without him. We never had a home playoff game, either teams, so having home field advantage, all these people coming up, you know, and then <laughs> having our team being more pumped up than ever before because, you know, we have a chance of winning. Thank you so much, Ryan. We have our play of the night plus our latest unsung hero of the season. More Friday Night Blitz coming up on the other side. And now, the McAdoo Play of the Night. Sponsored by McAdoo's. Our Macadated play tonight comes from the PH Fleming game. Fleming's just here. Preston goes to the air, hooks up with Karon Ferguson, who dives for the touchdown. Ferguson, Preston leading Fleming to the upset in the playoffs. They get our Macadated play of the night. No, it's Hardy's Friday Night Blitz Unsung Hero, celebrating those who keep the game moving. Sponsored by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It is unsung hero time. I'd like to give a shout out to, and a thank you to the American Legion Homer Dillard Post number 78 in Marsville. It's last Saturday night. They invited me to be their guest speaker for their annual Veterans Day banquet. It was an honor and a privilege to speak at this special event. Being an Army veteran, it was great to talk at this gathering. I enjoyed meeting so many great people last Saturday. To all my fellow veterans throughout, I salute you and thank you for your service and being this week's unsung heroes. Well, meanwhile, onto the college front tonight, it's CIAA Championship Week in Salem as Virginia Union and Fayetteville State. They'll play in the title game tomorrow. Now, the last time Virginia Union won the CIAA was back in 2001. Fayetteville State, they're defending champs. In fact, this is their sixth straight appearance in the championship game. Both teams in the league say they're happy to be in Salem and the Roanoke Valley for their championship. 
we put our championships like it's a national championship. This may be the only time that they get to play in a championship at this magnitude. And so to give that experience to them is important to me. Um, I think it's great for student athletes. You know, they work so hard to get to the point where they're here. You know, um, we put it all together this year. You know, we had some great years since I've been here, but the, the student athletes this year put it all together and they deserve the right to be here. They've earned it. It's a great event. Um, it means a lot to us because it means we won our division and we have the opportunity uh, to play for another championship. So it's a great feeling, a great honor, and the city of Salem Roanoke does a great job hosting us. Now, Virginia Union again, Fayetteville State, they battle each other for the CIAA title. That's tomorrow afternoon at 3 at Salem Stadium. Other college football action tomorrow locally, Virginia Tech. They will visit Boston College at noon. Old Dominion at Liberty at 1. All these games are at 1. BMI at Ferrum, Washington and Lee at Shenandoah. Ferrum at Averitt and Southern Virginia at Maryville. Well, that does it for this edition of the Hardy's Friday Night Blitz. Again, happy Veterans Day to all my fellow veterans. I salute you. Thank you for your service and all you do for our country. Now, we'll have this show up momentarily on WFSRTV.com. Thank you so much for watching the show. I'm Jermaine Farrell. Hope all of your teams are winners. Have a wonderful and blessed weekend, everybody.